So all these things start happening, and it doesn't matter what scale we go by, whether it was Adox, Feeks, or Hans, they all have what's going on inside this little plant, okay? So we start to germinate, we start to get the radical root going down, we get lateral and seminal roots going. This plant is taken <coughs> off below ground. Seedling development, now we're starting to get some leaves above the surface, and as we start to grow here, we've got our, our crown system beginning to develop. As we get into our early seedling development, okay, now we have initiated the heads and the main shoots and the tillers. Okay? Now all of this is in embryonic state. It is very, very tiny. And so as this plant starts to put things together, at every stage something very critical is happening and it's relating, it's happening because of a mineral or not because a mineral is not there. Okay? When we start tillering, okay, adequate nutrition is incredibly critical for forming of heads and spikelets. Okay? Now, the wonderful thing about wheat is when we start <coughs> to grow this plant, we have everything intact. Now, a lot of plants, we have to grow and progressively add yield. Cereal grains are not that way. They start with 100% of their genetic potential intact. And we work backwards. Okay, so if you missed it before, we start with somewhere between 200 to 300 kernels per head. And we harvest 30, 50, 60, kernels. So we actually went backwards from what we started with. Okay, so this is the plant's physiology. If we understand this, then we understand why and when the nutrition has to come into the plant. Because it's got to support what the plant is already programmed to do. We're not changing the program. We're just supplying the groceries at the right time. That's what we're looking at here. And so right here, by the time I get into my six or seven tillers, the highest grain response to nutrition occurs prior to stem elongation. Now that isn't very tall. This little guy is still down in here. But the nutrition that it has, the plant is already sensing and determining what it's going to keep. Okay, so, and what I will tell you is with every life form, life beget, does not begin at birth. When we get baby chickens, baby hogs, baby humans, we think, oh, it's arrived and now I can take over. Life begins at conception, without exception. So what did I go into that seed with to start my wheat or start my barley? Did I have high mineral content or did I have low mineral content? Okay, we're gonna talk about some things that have a tremendous effect on plant nutrition and plant seed mineral content. Okay? Because I promise you, if you buy mineral deficient seed, you will never grow great grain from that. Because it's already handicapped. Those resources are not in it to put the things together. Okay? And so, with, with the hogs, okay? We get a baby pig and we think, okay, now we can start to grow it. Every muscle, every fiber, every contour in that pig was determined between 29 days and 50 days. And when it's born, you don't have the ability to do what, Abe? Me and Abe have this joke going on. What can't we do, Abe? We can't unrunt the pig because all of those things have already been determined in gestation. And wheat is no different. 
we are no different. Okay? So when you see a child, two-year-old baby with leukemia, you have some seriously degenerated parent material. It's not the fault of that child. They're not made that way. Okay? We inherit these because we don't have the nutritional content. Okay? Right here, these very young, tiny plants are incredibly aware of their environment. They know where they're on the planet, they know their longitude, they know their latitude, they know everything about the soil. They've already sensed their soil mineral content, they've sensed their soil biology content. They can tell who their neighbors are, the good guys and the bad guys, and they are already having all these discussions. The only ones oblivious to this is us. Okay? You think plants don't communicate? How do they attract pollinators? How do they repel predators? I'm going to show you how they do this. They're already equipped to do this. Question? Oh, okay. All right. So all of this is in this plant's intelligence. So if we understand what this plant is doing and how it's doing it, we can aid the function of this intelligence. So right here, I've got this really tiny plant. Nutrition is incredibly important at this point. It's going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to set some boundaries of what I perceive my environment to be. Now again, we're back to epigenetic consequences. Ken, so you said you could have mineral deficient seed. Did I hear you right? Bingo. Big time. Huge. How do you know which, how do you, how do you know what parent stock is good and not? Okay. Two years ago, we made the decision to get into a new company that was building a new type of scanning system. And we have, it's kind of an interesting technology. It came from some other industries and it was applied to agriculture, but we can take a seed and we can measure every mineral in it from sodium to uranium. And we can look at the parts per million, parts per trillion. And so we can look at, say, how much copper have I got? How much zinc have I got? How much manganese have I got? How much boron? molybdenum, cobalt. And the seed can be no better than the product or the soil that it came from. Okay? And so if you are looking at buying seed, and see this is one of the problems that we struggle with is whether we're feeding cattle or feeding chickens or feeding hogs, if the mineral content isn't in the seed, how is that animal going to get it? That's its food source. And so if the mineral is missing, it's going to have a whole lot of physio physiological consequences. Okay? So if it's not, if we don't get it into our seed, we can't get it into our animals. So there has to be a mineral deficiency that causes healthy pigs versus runs. Right, Abe? There is. Yes? So by seeding low protein wheat, do you set yourself up the next year for low protein wheat or nothing to do with it? It depends on how your plants are bred, okay? So when you breed plants to not utilize nitrogen, and they've got those traits, that plant is designed to function that way. If you save that seed, you're going to get that intelligence. I need some high protein seed. <laughs> this is what happens. You know, you guys, you guys work your butts off all fall, spring, and summer growing this stuff, and we think all seed is the same. I promise you it is not. It isn't even remotely the same. So we can take a seed sample, grind it up, put it on our mineral scanner, and within about 90 seconds, we can take a reading in about three or four different categories and we can look at the mineral content. And, and you, when you know what these minerals are driving in these plants, you can go, uh-oh, this plant has low copper. 
I will automatically attract disease and insect. Unless I figure out a way to compensate for that low copper in that plant, I am inviting disease. Because copper is a major, major player in the plant's immune system. And I'm going to tell you how this works, okay? And so manganese, if we have low manganese seeds, your plants are not going to photosynthesize well. They're not going to reproduce well. Manganese is a huge manganese. This is M-N. It is the driver of your plant's reproductive properties. Okay, so if I want my plant to put on a big head and I've got some minerals missing and manganese is one of them, you will not get a big head because it's driving your reproductive system. Same thing in cattle. If you have reproductive issues, you're missing some minerals and manganese is a big one. Same thing with chickens, same thing with hogs, same thing with humans. Okay? If we don't have it, we don't work so well. Okay? Because these minerals are at the base of all of these physiological processes. Okay? You can trace every disease back to a mineral deficiency. Okay? So, Super critical right here, we get this in place. Now, the next thing that happens is I go into booting, okay? This is when the plant starts to abort. Florets, which become kernels, okay? It says, oh, I'm not very big, depending on my variety. You know, I don't even have my flag leaf out. I'm just barely starting to put that head up, the stem, Guess what? Life hasn't been very good. So it begins to reabsorb the kernels. It says, you know what? I'm not wasting the nutrition because I can't finish the job. I can't produce 300 kernels. But you know what? I can do 30. So where does the other 270 go? They get reabsorbed, okay? Right here, the plant begins this abortion process. Now, my flag leaves come out down here, and I'm going to get my head emerged. I'm gonna come out, my head is completely out at this point, and then right here as I start to pollinate, my floret abortion ends and pollination begins. The plant will not waste one ounce of energy pollinating a kernel that will never happen. So by the time we pollinate, you have already set your kernel count. So, then right down here, you got what you got. Okay, so this is why we want to look at the, the nutrient demand of these, these nutrition. The length, the width, the sizes are established. Now this has to do with moisture, okay? We had some really great grain last year coming. We had over 100 bushel dry land grain in early June. We did not end up with that, okay? Not that the kernels weren't there, because we were missing about four inches of rain. But we didn't, we didn't, we weren't, it wasn't because our kernel count wasn't there, it's because we didn't have that size. Okay? So the plant says, I can do this, I can do this. Then as we come back in, our, our starch and protein content is being established. These plants are just methodical about going through this process. And if we understand what they are, then we know when we gotta get nutrition to this plant. When the nitrogen, when the phosphorus, and when you look at these charts, is all this stuff coming in at the same time? Nitrogen, sulfur, potassium, phosphate, is it all coming in at the same time? It is not. The plant physiology is dictating when the plant will use it and what it's, what it's using it for. 